what is going on comic fam welcome to another episode of my interviews where i have comic creator dalbor tollies welcome to the show thank you so much for hopping on talking about comics with me thank you for having me if you are not familiar with dalbor's work he's done stuff for marvel with uh, one of the co-creators of hit monkey he's done artwork on daredevil or not daredevil, uh deadpool kills the marvel universe so i know you guys know that and just recently you've been doing a lot of stuff with awa uh with hotel volumes one and two you also did work on casual fling you're across the board when it comes to doing your your artwork so thank you for just taking some time to talk about comics with me sure uh one of the things i always like to ask when i bring a creator on is uh how did you get into art what drew you into art like what made you want to be an artist I mean, uh, uh, particularly in comic books? Yeah, yeah, partic- yeah, in particular in comic books, yeah. Well, honestly, I don't know. Uh, since I remember, since I was a kid, I was always drawing, and I was always drawing comic book characters. I was not drawing, like, you know, uh, stuff from life or portraits of characters. It was always uh, uh, comic book characters, and it was always, like, action sequences or, or some big splash panels, you know, but always comic book characters. And um, since um, maybe people don't know that, uh, when, I, when I was born in 1972, eons ago, uh, my country was part of Yugoslavia. In the meantime, Yugoslavia fell apart. But uh, in those days, uh, Yugoslavia was a social, socialist country. Okay. And uh, to even consider doing comic books was like, you know, grow grow out of it kid you know yeah the, the, the sooner you leave it the better so my parents tried to direct me you know to be a serious artist you know like graphic artist painter whatever right but um no i just wanted to draw comic books that's awesome you know because i feel like all the time so much people correlate comics with kids and i'll tell you if you've read a comic that you've drawn none of your comics are very much for kids <laughs> Well, uh, especially lately, but, you know, as I said, it was considered uh, something for kids and yeah. like, a, like a real low pulp and you should yeah. grow out of it as soon as possible. And, you know, it was like a mantra, it's for kids, it's for kids, it's for kids, it's childish, forget about it. And then in 1990, Yugoslavia fell apart and stuff from, from the West, you know, from, especially from the US, started pouring in, you know, okay. comic books uh, of all kinds. We did have comics. We did have quite a few comics, but um, it was more in a in the form of magazines. Okay. And the editors were great. They were like uh, editor in those days was an educator. So we had like uh, you know filtered the best of the best from Europe, like France, Belgium, Italy, U.S. But the best of the best, you know, comic books. Not not mer- not very much, but. Very, uh, very good ones, but still not very much. So finally, uh, 90s came, stuff started pouring in, and uh, a local comic book dealer who's now a friend of mine has a serious comic book shop. Uh, he was persuading me to to read the the Dark Knight Returns. Oh yeah. And I was like, you know, I, I don't know, it's too big. It's, it's I'm, I'm not sure I like the art, you know. Eh. So read it, read it. You you will thank me. Read it. <laughs> and as I was reading it, it was like, this is not for kids, you know. This yeah. is serious stuff, you know. And that was it. Like I was hooked. I always loved comics. I always toyed with the idea of, of maybe someday making comics. But as I've read The Dark Knight Returns, that was it. You know, that was like breaking point. That's it. I'm into comics. That's it. That's that's so cool to hear. Like I've I've talked to a lot of creators, and it seems like the Dark Knight uh, was one of those. You know, Dark Knight Returns was one of those. You know, very influential books, which we all know. But for a lot of creators, that have like, oh, this is something that I can do. This like that's really cool to hear that. Well, if if you if you if you see uh, the history of uh, of uh, development of comic book as a medium and the way it was, perce- it was perceived by public, by mm-hmm. uh, critics, by, by, you know, whoever. Uh, Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns in the US, it was like breaking point. From that yeah. point on, comic books were serious literature. 
Yeah. And that's it. You know, you go heads down. So. <laughs> so how did you get then from where your love for wanting to get into comics? How did you get your foot in the door into creating comics? Yeah, well, I started, you know, creating comics, but honestly, I, I wasn't very good. You know, I, I drew better than most of my friends, but not, you know, when I was, when I, as I started meeting my, uh, my future friends, my now friends, you know, yeah. book artists and illustrators, I was kind of worst amongst them, you know, I, okay. I was not good, you know, compared to them. But, uh, and, and the, the storytelling techniques, you know, the, the, the stuff that, that is necessary for creating comics, I, I didn't quite get it. And um, I was, you know, I was not to be, you know, one day. I was, I was not perceived as, you know, one to succeed, rumor, I'd say. Yeah. But there's a saying here that says, uh, it's not necessarily that a good looking guy gets the girl but the most persisting one, you know, I really work hard. I really yeah. work hard. And uh, I, I, my school, if, if you, you can put it that way, my school was storyboards for marketing uh, agencies. You know? Okay. They would, the nineties uh, were, uh, marketing agencies were flourishing in Croatia and they desperately needed artists. Yeah. And I really was a hardworking artist and I, and I did a lot of work for, uh, for a lot of them. And it was a great school because you don't get to pick what you draw. Mm. You don't have time because it's always, hey, can you, you know, can you do like, I don't know, 80 panels by tomorrow or something <laughs> like that? So deadline is impossible. You yeah. don't get to choose what to draw. And mostly the, 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 the stories, the scripts for those for those commercials were as stupid as possible. You know, it's, it, yeah. it was possibly it was insultingly stupid. So it's good for your pride because you lose it very fast, <laughs> and you you start to to learn how to think while yeah. you know composing the panels. Uh, you 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 learn about economics of storytelling and okay. the way. Yeah. So so that was like that was my school. And very good school. Uh, and then I started to become someone who is dependable, someone who will do the work. And uh, people started recommending me around. So my, my friend and colleague, uh, Goran Sujukra, also a great artist, uh, he recommend, recommended me to, to Joe Pruitt from Aftershock. Mm -hmm. But in those days, he was uh, founding Desperado Comics. Oh, okay. Desperado publishing Desperado Comics. I don't remember. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And he gave me a chance. And as they say, the rest is history. Nice. That's so cool to just kind of hear the behind the scenes of how you know you know the process started for you. And I've got to say, I one of my favorite uh creations that you've done is that you were one of the co-creators of Hit Monkey, which I adore and I love that character. So I have to ask you this. Um, how did how did that conversation go uh, as you guys were creating Hit Monkey, the character? Well, uh, the the machine, the creative machine behind the character was Axel Alonso. Okay. He was he was uh, he was not still uh, he was not yet an editor in chief at Marvel, but he, he was pretty high ranks. And uh, he actually hired me. Uh, I was hired in 2009, something like around there, and I did one one uh, one episode, one standalone episode of Deadpool Team Up. Okay, he was uh, teamed up with uh, Hercules, and uh, after that, he said, "I have a crazy idea. I want you to draw it," and it was Hit Monkey, and. I said, who, 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 what is this character? Oh, no, it's a new character. You know, you get to do what you want. He needs to be slick. He needs to be cool. You know? And uh, the, the, you know, how, how people spiritually always try to find their, their spirit animal. Yeah. So this was like uh, Daniel's, Daniel Way's inversion. Like this is an animal with a spiritual man, right? Yeah. Who is the assassin that got killed and everything? And what what drew me into story because it was like 
I thought this was going to be as ridiculous as possible. But actually, it's dead serious. When you read the story, it's dead yeah. serious. And that was what was like uh, most appealing thing to me. Like we're doing something impossibly ridiculous and behaving as if it isn't so. Right. And it was a lot of fun, really a lot of fun. And uh, Matt Hollingsworth, the great colorist, he did the first episode and uh, he volunteered, like, because he was already an established big name. Uh, he lives actually in Croatia. Uh, oh, wow, okay. He's married here and has a, has a, has a lovely son. And uh, he wanted, like, like to back me up, to, to put his name, like, you know, let's, let's bump this thing up. You know? This is your, like, first gig. This is your, like, exposure moment. So yeah. let's do it. And it was supposed to be a one shot. But I guess the, the response was pretty good. And uh, uh, later on, there was a mini series, like I think it was three issues, mm -hmm. so all together like four issues. And that's it. It, it became a cult, you know, like it, it's, it's, it has its cult public, like fandom, local, not, 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 not very big, but still, you know, uh, whenever I go to convention, there's always at least one guy with a paper like, can you draw me cute monkey? Like, ah, yeah, my boy. Well, it's so it's funny because it's true. Like I was not really familiar with Hip Monkey until uh, they started to announce that it was going to be a show. And one of my friends who, uh, Boof, who's a big comic book nerd with me, he was like, as soon as he announced, he was like, oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite characters. And it, then I started to read it. And then I watched all the episodes of the show. And I was like, after reading it, I was hooked. And so you guys created a great character, I think. And I, I think what you said is so true. Like it's when I explain the concept that people are like, wait, what? But it's so, it seems so grounded and it seems so taken so seriously that it really does work really well. Yeah, it's unexpected, you know? Yeah. Because uh, it was, uh, it was imagined, I believe, that was a long time ago. I believe it was like, he was supposed to be like reoccurring uh, guest character to, to Deadpool. Okay. So Deadpool was starting at that time. He was starting to switch to this ridiculous character, uh, mocking superhero genre, right? The parody of all the whole thing. And um, but no, the 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 Daniel did the unexpected. He he wrote it like dead serious, like a Hong Kong action revenge movie. You know, it was great fun. Yeah. One thing I had to fight for as an artist not really fight for but you know i was it was not supposed to be in the script and i was like please put it i'm i'm a big kung fu fan you know i i do martial arts myself i grew up in bruce lee you know that, yeah. that, he's one of my personal gods and i said i need a nunchuck fights you know i need you know i need hit monkey to have a nunchuck fight please and i remember the script coming it, it was the last episode page I don't know, whatever it was just one sentence you have two pages go wild so <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's go You're like yes victory <laughs> yeah. so how how was that like have you gotten to watch the show how was that experience to see something that you've created make it i'm ashamed to say i'm ashamed to say i still haven't watched it because uh in croatia we don't have yeah Hulu. yeah and I have to find certain ways how to watch it. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I still haven't. You know? I'm, but, but I'm very hyped. You know, I've, yeah. I hear only good things. I've seen the trailers, of course. Right. Uh, it seems rather faithful. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm very hyped. I'm, I'm very eager to see, but st I still haven't. Yeah, it's got to be. I just feel like it's got to be such a cool experience. Uh, something that, you know, you help create is now, you know, on screen and people are you know finding you know more bringing more people into this character and and into this world so this is we're like you know we're on the margin of things here yeah Asia. and uh i started getting uh screenshots you know of tvs in my messenger i didn't even know i know i knew it was coming i mean i know they were making it but as it came out uh i started you know like hundreds uh, during the night screenshots of, of a TV screen, like created by Dalai Wade in Dalai College. Right. Like, Ooh, here we go. <laughs> so, it was fun. That's so cool. Uh, 
one last thing I wanted to ask you about kind of in the Marvel universe before we switch over to some of your AWA stuff here. Um, you got to do a project that I feel like most artists never get a chance to do. And that was, you literally just got to draw all the Marvel superheroes just getting destroyed and killed and murdered <laughs> in Deadpool uh, kills the Marvel universe. What was that experience like for you? Uh, well, uh, to be honest, it's not the only uh, title of that sort. It was like a Marvel Universe versus the Punisher, I believe. Yeah. Uh, done by Goran Parlov, who's also creation, also lives in Zagreb. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us here. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think later on, it was uh, Leandro Fernandez doing uh, Wolverine versus Marvel Universe. Okay. I, I, it I'm, not, I'm not sure. But yeah, it was it was in the ages of in the era of uh, uh, if you remember that economic crisis in two thousand eight, yep. And finally, the crisis reached the comic book industry, and Marvel was uh, shutting down a lot of uh, ongoing series. Serial mm. series, series, series. Sorry, my excuse my English. <laughs> and this was like a filter project, you know, because. Uh, Again, Axel Alonso, I think he was at that moment an editor in chief, or maybe not yet, I don't remember. He called me, and first, I, you know, if the editor calls you, I thought I'm getting fired, you know, something's wrong. Yeah. And uh, he called me and said, I have a project, it's for you. You're going to draw everyone. So all the editors are going to see you. So this is, you know, like, this is it. This is your breaking point. You're either, you know, either in or either out after this. And it was Deadpool kills Marvel Universe, and I really did get to draw <laughs> everyone in, in one in one mini series, and that was a lot of fun. That was a yeah. lot of fun. Uh, that was a fun script, and I was surprised reading the script. Uh, it was Colin Bunn, mm -hmm. and I was surprised. Like, if you think about it, it's quite easy to kill a superhero. You know, Just yeah. Put a little, you know, put a little thought in it. You know. And um, uh, a couple of years later, that, that was that was really, really, I had really great fun. But I didn't know, again, being in the Martian things, I didn't know how big it was. You know? Yeah. Like, you know, I was around issue three. I think I was finishing issue three. And then the news came, like, the, the they were going to reprint all of the four issues. And I was, like, doing issue three. Like, it wasn't even done yet. <laughs> And then I started Googling a bit. Reviews weren't raving, but you know, the sales were like impossible. Like it was yeah. a great hit. It was great fun. And a couple of years later, uh, we did a crazy title. Deadpool kills Marvel Universe again. That, that's its title. That's how it's called. Deadpool kills Marvel Universe again. Uh, the same team, uh, Colin Bond and Col uh, writing. And it ignored completely the, the, the first movie series. Like it's like a parallel universe, like whole thing over again. Yeah. A different sort of, of plot and um, also great. That's so cool. So I'm assuming then your shift uh, where you started to do some of the work with AWA was following along with Axel because you brought, brought his name up multiple times in this. Um, so you uh, were one of the first, your pieces that AWA put out was hotel was in one of their first wave of releases. Um, yeah. So what was, what was that shift for you of from working on like licensed characters of like from the Marvel universe to then getting to deal with more of your own creations in hotel and casual fling and things like that. Um, a bit scary, you know, because uh, the um, licensed characters uh, are you know they're like set they're standard they're right like, you, know, you know how they look you know the rules and you just try to you you do your do your work as best as you can but this is like undiscovered country like this is you know this is all you you, know, you and the writer I had some experience uh, doing creator own stuff uh, again with Joe Pruitt and AfterShock mm -hmm. uh, the Witch Hammer that was that was a project also with Colin Bunn. I worked a lot with that guy. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, just a year ago, I did again for Aftershock, again with one, Eden. It was, it was a one-shot uh, special. It was beautiful. That, the art yeah, in that was beautiful. I, I remember picking up that one shot, um, and I, I raved about it on my, one of my review shows with some of our friends. We were talking about it, so well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. I loved, I loved working. I loved the story. And uh, and I, I I really enjoyed it because I I got to try some new stuff, mm -hmm. uh, some new approach. But um, so I wasn't inexperienced, but still, you know, and especially Axel was founding this completely new company, you know, and this was like as you say the first wave. You don't know what's going to happen, right? And um, it's a horror, you know. I I I love horror. I love what John Lee's did, but you know, in my Head. It was like it's a horror. I, I don't know how people will react. It's, but then it was, it was like it was, it was great. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So it, after that, uh, I cut loose. Like it was like okay, we survived. This is it. Let's go. What, what else is there? So yeah, it was fun. It was you know in the end it was fun. It was scary, but you know yeah, it, it turned out okay. Well, and it was. It was a big hit. I mean. Now, as we're recording this video, uh, issue one of volume two has just released for hotel. Um, and so that's gotta, that's gotta just be encouraging of how much, you know, fans love the first volume that, I mean, right away, it's like, boom, we need more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, uh, the first four issues of, of the four issues of volume one weren't even out yet. Like it was like around issue three was supposed to get out to come out. And the fa fans was already like, oh, this is just this is too little. Not only four issues, we want more. We want more. Yeah. So the whole thing wasn't even out yet. But uh, and uh, more more important uh, to this moment, to, I mean, to add some gravity to it all, uh, AWA launched right into the pandemic. Yeah. First titles, first issues came out, and bam, lockdown, everything stopped. So they switched. Uh, Online cell phones and I don't know whatever they yeah. they, they did a smart move to survive, but again, uh, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of the economy, everything falling down, still hotel made made quite a success. So it was yeah. like yeah, it was a proud moment. Yeah, I remember that that first wave of of books coming out, like you said, right at that time, and to see to see it survive through that that you know initial launch that just shows you the the talent that you know axel brought together and that you guys all brought to the projects and you know and then you got in on the second wave with jason uh with casual fling um which seems like a complete departure of kind of what you typically are asked to draw uh artistically where you're, you're like violence and horror and then it's like hey i have like this you know seduction thriller <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was that was strange because that was like erotic thriller, right? Uh, family drama, mm -hmm. but but I'm a mas masochist, right? That's the right pronouncing. I'm a masochist. Mm -hmm. uh, I have this stupid life philosophy that says, "Bring it on, <laughs> whatever." Uh, I saw a little movie. It's from '78. It's called Superman. Maybe you've heard of it. And uh, I love that movie. I, I know it by heart. And yeah. um, there's a dialogue there between Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane, right? As they as they appear in the movie first time. Mm -hmm. And Jimmy says, Jimmy Slane, how do you get great stories? And she replies, a good reporter doesn't get great stories. Jimmy. Good reporter makes them great. So that's, that's like, I took that, like my motto, whatever you give me, I will try to find something that will turn me on and I'll try to do this as best as I can. Yeah. So uh, we have a term here for a casual thing type of comic book. Uh, we would call it a blah, blah book. Mm. Like, you know, you can easily draw talking heads and it's legitimate. It's, it's what the story is, people talking. It's a drama, and all's fair. 
but if if you remember the book, uh, that's not my approach. I I toyed with a with a layout design, mm -hmm. with a lighting, use of blacks. I tried to you know to make it like visually dynamic because you know what do you do when you come into a store and you pick a new comic book? You flip through it. You know? Yeah. So if it can be the best story in the world, but if artists didn't do his job, you got to put it back. Mm -hmm. so it must be visually appealing. Yeah. So that was my approach, and it was a erotic thriller. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a slippery slope. You know. Yeah. How far you go, uh, and there was a lot of back and forth uh, between me and the editors because it's one thing to write a scene. Yeah. And it can be proved. But once you draw it, once you can really see it, yeah. maybe, you know, maybe we should change. Uh, and I was like, I was very careful you know, yeah. not to be uh, disrespectful, you know, and, and, and uh, not to be too graphic. Right. But still, not being too graphic in Croatia means something quite else than not being too graphic in the US. So, uh, it was a lot of back and forth, but still, it's it's an interesting book. Yeah. Well, and I, you talk about the layouts and things. I remember in the first issue, um, it's there's like a nine panel page or something where it just is like they're at the bar where they first meet. And it moves the story along in such a way that you feel like you would have needed that in that first issue, like the whole issue to tell that relationship. And you guys both move the story along. And I think that's, you know, between the writing and the layout and the art, it really allowed us to jump fully into the story a lot faster than I think we should have been. And so I think that's credit to what you said about, you know, taking the time to look at art and the layouts and things like that. And You, you need to, I, I always say, you need to, you, I, I need to subdue myself to the writer. Mm -hmm. I'm at his, I'm, a, I'm his tool, you know, he, it's his story and I need to find the tools to make it alive. Mm -hmm. But um, if writing is not really good, then, you know, there is no tool in the world that can help you. Right. But Jason did a really good job. His pacing is really good and his dialogues are great. His dialogues are so natural and fluid mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, uh, Often, I have to, you know, as I read the script, I need to really think about it, you know, try to try to understand it. But this was like instantly. It was like he's not necessarily artist friendly, mm. but is to me, he, it was really compatible. You know, mm. I, I I really saw the characters, the situations, the way how to approach it, uh, uh, the, the the surroundings, the backgrounds. They were very important, obviously, to Jason because yep. he, was, he would always uh, note the real location. In New York. Mm. You know? And so, okay, this is like, you know, let's make this work palpable. Let's, like, let's draw everything. You know, it's it's going to take a lot of time and effort, but yeah, you know, the the the, the story of this kind, the, the the plot of this kind, can only be happening, you know, in a big city. Right. Where, where this sort of criminal can be like elusive and anonymous. Right. So you need to have this protagonist that is a city. You need to, mm -hmm. you know, to make it alive. So yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was, it was really fun. Yeah. It was funny. You talk about having, you know, as an artist having to, you know, have draw the city to make the city alive and, you know, and then in the hotel, I mean, I feel like the hotel is also a protagonist and, you know, it's like a character in the story too, that feels, I mean, it's alive. And so, it's interesting to see that in both of those, you know, stories. Uh, at that especially, time. especially in, in volume two, you're gonna you're gonna feel this because I I really uh, often from episode to episode, as you know, as we progress to make it more obvious uh, gradually that like I always position the, the camera, if you like, yeah, uh, to seem as if the hotel itself is watching. Mm. You know? So it it was yeah. It's it's always fun to toy with with the surroundings and, yeah. and, and to use it as, as a storytelling tool. So was it easy to get back into the world of hotel after going you know from casual thing and other stuff, or was it like oh this is stressful? I, <laughs> I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. I was you know when Axel emailed and said you know we're coming back, 
Hotel Volume Two, like, oh god, I can't, I can't wait to start. It was, yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun because, in a way, you know that uh, people expect what they like, like mm -hmm. more of the same. But if you give them more of the same, they're going to be disappointed because it's the same. You know? Right. So uh, uh, John upped, upped his game. You'll, you'll, you'll see as, as the story progresses. Yeah. It's really, really sick. And, um, and of course, I had to do the same. You know, I, I changed a little bit uh, the, my, my, my style, you know, my eating style. I, I, it's, it's less clean than, than the first volume. Okay. A lot more shadows, lot, you know, a bit more details to the hotel itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, crazy time ahead. You'll see. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate you so much just taking some time uh, to uh, talk about comics and your artwork with me. Um, before I let you go, uh, is there anything else? Uh, but obviously, as we talked about hotels, you know, coming out now, is there other stuff that you're working on right now that you can talk about? Or is that kind of your focus right now as hotel? I'm finishing. I'm wrapping hotel issue four. Like I have like five more pages, about five more pencil pages to go. Like okay. Five more years, and that's it. And yes, I'm working on something else that no, I can't tell you. That's all right. <laughs> so, um, well, where can people follow you uh, online to stay up to date with what you have coming out? Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. So, yeah. Awesome. Have. I'll make sure I have all the links below uh, this video so people can just, you can hop on and click. Uh, make sure you, you follow along. Um, Thank you so much for just taking some time to talk about comics with me. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, gang, with that being said, hopefully you can find some time to curl up, grab a book, and nerd out. Peace.